<laughs> thank you, John, and thank uh, uh, Heritage Foundation, and thank uh, Heritage Foundation's uh, president, uh, Jim DeMitt, for this uh, opportunity. Senator DeMitt was my choice for president in uh, 2008 and 2012. And I knew that uh, Jim was going to be president. I just didn't know he was going to be president of the Heritage Foundation. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the uh, uh, Heritage Foundation, a conservative movement, uh, America is very fortunate to have uh, Jim uh, DeMitt as its president. Uh, uh, Jim has been the de facto leader of the conservative movement for, uh, for many, many years. And as that leader, he has understood something that uh, uh, most conservatives, quite frankly, uh, haven't understood, and I think it's uh, been to our detriment. That's why I wrote uh, the book, Takeover. Uh, the subtitle of the book uh, uh, is A Hundred Year War for the Soul of the GOP and How Conservatives Can Finally Win It. Uh, and I should say uh, that uh, the uh, I jokingly refer to myself as 003. Uh, means I've been active at the national level of the conservative movement longer than every living conservative except two others. Uh, 001 is uh, the uh, first lady of the conservative movement, Phyllis Schlafly, and 002 is your distinguished colleague here, Dr. Lee Edwards. And uh, so uh, I have been at the front lines of this movement for, uh, for a long time, and I've seen uh, us take loss after loss after loss. And uh, so I wrote this book because I think for the most part, conservatives haven't understood that they're in this uh, battle. That, uh, and you're not going to win a battle, uh, much less a war, if you don't know you're, uh, you're, you're in a war. And so uh, I think it's very, very important for uh, conservatives to, uh, to understand the past. Because if you don't understand the past, you're not going to know how to chart the future. So, We've had, as a movement, in my opinion, our political guns pointed at the wrong target. We've been focused on the Democrats, uh, Pelosi, Reid, Obama, and that has been a mistake, quite frankly, because the real opponent of conservatives is inside the Republican Party. We are like the biblical Jews who had to wander through the desert for 40 years until that generation of failed, flawed leaders had passed from the scene. And we're not going to get to the political promised land until we get new leaders, okay? And uh, the uh, American voters just do not agree with uh, uh, Republican leaders. They don't like the Republicans. Uh, the media and the big government Republicans have done a, uh, a good job of blaming us conservatives, uh, principled uh, conservatives, limited government conservatives, Tea Partiers for their losses. But the opposite is the truth. The voters in 2006, 2008, uh, took the Congress and the White House away from the Republicans. In my opinion, having nothing to do with Nancy Pelosi, Barack Obama, uh, Harry Reid had everything to do with the failed, immoral, in my opinion, corrupt leadership of the big government Republicans. People just don't like them. And when they are the face of the opposition to the, uh, to the Democrats, Republicans seldom win. Uh, there have been four, four big Republican victories in my lifetime, and that's a long time, but only four. And in those four, uh, the face of the opposition to the Democrats was conservatives, limited government conservatives. 1980, under Reagan, 1984, uh, Reagan's re-election, 1994, contract with America, the Gingrich Revolution, 2010, under the uh, leadership uh, to, of the Tea Party. In 2010, the Baynard, Mitch McConnell, Karl Rove, Bush, none of them are to be seen in this election. What people see is Rush Limbaugh, Hannity, Levin, the Tea Party, Rand Paul, Mike Lee, Marco Rubio, they liked that and gave the Republicans their biggest victory in 75, 80 years, okay? So uh, if we want to win in the future, we're going to have to make sure that we keep some advice in mind. And I get my advice by paraphrasing uh, James Carville. Remember 1992, Carville said ad nauseum <laughs> over and over. We were tired of hearing him say, is the economy stupid? Is the economy stupid? Well, I paraphrase that and say to conservatives, it's the primary stupid. It's the primary stupid. Because we can see as conservatives 
this wave coming. And it could be a wave of tsunami proportions that's going to drive the uh, uh, Democrats, many of them, out of office uh, this fall. And if all it does is bring in more big government, establishment Republicans, we will have wasted the opportunity of a uh, lifetime, conservatives. So it is the primaries. And most states, uh, the filing deadline has not passed. So there's plenty of opportunity for conservatives yet to file for office for the Congress, for uh, state offices, governor, lieutenant governor, state legislators, city council, mayors, and uh, we just have to uh, to remember it is the primaries. And in my opinion, uh, it is entirely possible if we focus uh, on taking back the Republican Party from the big government Republicans, we can do that in, uh, by 2016, in 2017, actually be governing America. You know, this war started, actually, uh, 102 years ago. Uh, a lot of people think maybe it started with uh, the Tea Party movement in 2009, 2010, or maybe uh, in the Gingrich Revolution of 94, or certainly by 1980, uh, when Reagan uh, was nominated and elected. No, it started literally 102 years ago when Teddy Roosevelt failed to get the Republican nomination for president, went across the street, in essence, started the Boo Moose Party, and split the Republican vote, allowing uh, Woodrow Wilson, a, a very progressive uh, Democrat, to become president of the United States with less than 42 percent of the vote. So we've been fighting that wing of the party ever since. And sometimes our opponents look like Teddy Roosevelt, sometimes Al Flandon, sometimes Tom Dewey or Nixon or Ford or Bob Dole or John McCain or Mitt Romney. But that's the, and today it's uh, John Baynard, Eric Cantor, uh, Mitch McConnell, Lamar Alexander. We're fighting that wing of the party. And as I said earlier, the voters reject them. Uh, and only when the face of the opposition to the Democrats is a limited government, constitutional conservatives, do we score big victories. The, uh, this very weekend, as a matter of fact, uh, Republican leaders, Eric Cantor, Kevin McCarthy, are meeting at the Ritz-Carlton in Amelia Island, uh, Florida, uh, meeting with the Main Street Partnership. And their objective with the Main Street Partnership is to, in Mitch McConnell's words, to crush them everywhere. That means us conservatives. So the Main Street Partnership that Eric Cantor and Kevin McCarthy are meeting with this weekend are designed to crush conservatives. So make no mistake about it. Our opponents in the Republican Party, the big government Republicans, they understand the problem, okay? And they understand uh, that we are their opponents. We hear in the press about the uh, conservatives have lost uh, you know, ground. They've reached their high water mark. They're on the downhill now. Tea Party is not uh, what it used to be. You know, the Main Street <laughs> Republicans don't see it that way. They see us as a serious threat to the growth of government. So we're, uh, we're doing well, conservatives, but uh, we've got a, a, a good ways to go. Uh, I remember uh, back in the 50s when I got involved in uh, politics, I was uh, Harris County uh, Young Republican Chairman in the late 50s. And in those days, the conservative movement rested on just a two-legged stool. Uh, national defense, which really meant anti-communism, and uh, uh, economic issues, lower taxes, uh, balanced budget, less government. And that was a two-legged stool, and we'd get 40, sometimes 45, uh, maybe 47 percent, very seldom did we get 51 percent. But only uh, in the late 70s, under the leadership of Paul Weyrich, of Jerry Falwell, Ronald Reagan, they reached out and brought social conservatives into the conservative movement. Now we're sitting on a three-legged stool, and that changed everything. Uh, we begin to get 51, 52, 53 percent of the vote. We're not governing America, but we're winning. Uh, and a two-legged stool, as we know, is not very sturdy, and so that's why we uh, seldom won. So now we're winning, but we're not governing America. And in my opinion, uh, in recent years, there's been a fourth leg of that stool that's been added. And that fourth leg is the Tea Party. And sometimes people say, well, isn't the Tea Party just like the economic conservatives? They believe in lower taxes, uh, less government, uh, balanced budget. Yes, but there is a big, big difference. Uh, and the difference is this. Uh, a few years ago, I was a Friday night keynote speaker in Dallas, Texas, uh, for about 125 conservatives who had gathered for a training session for the weekend. So first of all, I go out on the stage and uh, look at my watch and tell them, uh, say, uh, where you been? I've been waiting for you. 
I've been waiting 50 years for you people, you know. <laughs> and, uh, but it's all very true. But anyway, I met in my hotel room maybe 